What's up guys, this episode we're gonna be talking about Rails 6's new Webpacker setup for JavaScript and how to use that with CSS as well. So when you create a new Rails app with Rails 6, we have Rails 6 Beta 3 installed. Let's just call our app like Tailwind app. We're gonna set up Tailwind CSS and use the latest 1.0 version for that. Um, but when you set up a Rails 6 application, you're no longer going to have your JavaScript in the asset pipeline. This is a pretty big change and something that you're gonna have to probably work through as a process to upgrade to Rails 6. So this is one of the things that is a big benefit to us though because the asset pipeline was not something where we could easily use node modules or other modern JavaScript tools like Webpack. So by moving to Webpacker, we're using Webpack, which pretty much every modern JavaScript library supports. We can use Yarn to install those JavaScript libraries and then load them through Webpack, and it makes everything a lot easier. And we can do all kinds of cool stuff, including using Babel to uh, transpile our JavaScript to something the browsers understand. So we can write a bit nicer JavaScript that will eventually be in the browsers uh, earlier on because we can use Babel. So I wanna talk through the Webpacker setup um, inside your new Rails application. And so if we go into our Rails app, we can open up our text editor and poke around. Namely, the most important things you're gonna see here is your webpacker.yaml file. This configures how Webpacker works and you can turn on and off different options and um, asset extensions and so on. So these are all things that will help you configure um, Webpacker to do what you want. By default, the configuration is gonna be pretty much everything you need. You probably don't need to modify this um, at all. And the same thing goes for your Webpack config folder. Um, in here, you can add things to the uh, general environment, but you can also add things to specific environments like development, production, and test. So for the most part, we don't really need to deal with any of this or make changes to that either, but some libraries may need you to modify this file. So nor normally you'll probably end up modifying environments.js, um, if you needed to add something to your exports or whatever. So that is pretty straightforward. There's not a whole lot you need to worry about there, but there are also a few other things. We now have our package.json. This lists out all of the JavaScript libraries that our application will be using. This is where we will use the yarn command, um, and you'll need to install yarn separately to manage this. And it's very similar to Bundler and your gem file. So this is kind of like your gem file for JavaScript. So in here, we see that we have the Rails 6 Alpha, um, JavaScript libraries for Action Cable, Active Storage, and Rails UJS, as well as the Webpacker uh, library here and the latest version of TurboLinks. So this is all stuff that was gems before or built into Rails and they were all in your application.js file in the asset pipeline. This is going to be different now and live inside of your app JavaScript folder under packs application.js. So what you'll need to do is eventually move all of your JavaScript from the application.js in your asset pipeline to uh, the Webpacker app JavaScripts folder. So then um, you can see here, this is the default setup right now for Rails 6. So this is going to include the Rails UJS library, TurboLinks, Active Storage, and Channels. This is for Action Cable to set up all of those channels. So uh, each one of these is going to load the library and call a start function that they implement um, just to basically wire up everything uh, behind the scenes for us. Then when we import that channels uh, folder, it goes to import index.js, which then goes through and looks for all of the underscore channel.js files. So when you generate um, or create a new action cable channel, you can put that in this folder and uh, this will automatically load all of those for you. If we were to do something like Rails Webpacker install stimulus, this is going to do something very similar. So this is gonna modify our Webpack config to load our stimulus JavaScript. 
And you can see here that it appended some stuff to our application JS, created a, a couple folders here, and it's going to install uh, the stimulus dependencies and all of that um, in our new package JSON. So you'll see stimulus is added here now that we have that. We have our controllers folder now for stimulus controllers. And our application JS now does an import for controllers. This works very similar to requires. Um, there are a little bit of differences which you can read into, but uh, namely, this is going to load up uh, stimulus now and then do the same require context and just look for underscore controller files in this folder. So normally, this will go ahead and pick up your hello controller.js, which will just simply um, put this on the page if you define this controller. So if you want to upgrade a Rails 5 application to Rails 6 and move all your JavaScript over to Webpacker, it's gonna be a bit of a process, but the default Rails stuff is pretty straightforward to go and add. You're gonna add those libraries to your package.json using yarn, and then you're going to add your JavaScript lines right here. And luckily, it's very straightforward. There's not a whole lot you have to do. Um, and you can add your index.js and your consumer.js as well. If you want the easiest way to grow, do all of this stuff is to grab a brand new Rails application from Rails 6 and then just copy those files over and, and just take that from a Rails 6 app and put that directly into your Rails 5 app so that you can do the upgrade a lot simpler going forward. So let's take a look at how to add a JavaScript library like Flat Picker as a date picker. Um, and then we'll also talk about how to add Tailwind CSS 1.0. So one of the things that has changed um, with Webpacker is that previously we had a postcss.yaml file and now it's a JavaScript file for the config. And this is the standard way of doing things in the JavaScript world, not using YAML, but using a JavaScript config. And the same thing goes for our Babel config. So you're, you're going to want to actually change these over if you were using the older version of Webpacker so that you have the JavaScript versions of this. And it makes things a lot easier when you're adding JavaScript libraries like Tailwind. So let's talk about that in just a minute. But first, let's go and generate a scaffold for something like a post um, with a title and a published, uh, published date, which will be a date so that we can use the flat picker JavaScript picker. Now, once this is set up, you're gonna notice it's still generating CSS files, and we actually want to use Tailwind. Um, so we're going to remove the app asset style sheet scaffold.css, which has the scaffolding CSS, which will conflict with some of our um, JavaScript or CSS from Webpacker. So let's run Rails DB migrate to get that in our database. And then let's go to our routes file and just set root to post index. And we'll go ahead and run the Rails server. And once that's loaded, you can check this out in your browser and make sure that everything is running. So the thing we wanna do here is we wanna replace the published date with a text field. So we can replace that um, or add the flat picker functionality to that. And it can display a human readable date that is in a better format than uh, three select boxes like this. So let's go ahead and do that right now. We're gonna go to our um, terminal and we're gonna say yarn add flat picker. And this is uh, yarn add flat picker. This is going to add that library, install it, and just get it all set up for us. And now we need to import that. So we have the latest version of flat picker and we can go to our application JS pack and go and import that here. So what we'll do is we'll say import flat picker from flat picker. And this will give us access to this kind of as a variable. So we're importing that um, and we can now call flat picker anywhere inside of this file. And so to do that, um, or to set this up, we're gonna add this to an event listener as we normally do for libraries that aren't really aware of TurboLinks. TurboLinks load, and we'll use the new JavaScript uh, function syntax. And we'll say flat picker on any attribute that has data behavior equals uh, 
flat picker. And we will give it, you know, some options if we like. We can pass anything in here if you want to do something like uh, alt input is true, alt format is F, J, Y, and date format is year, month, date. Um, so you can do any kind of options you want in here, and this is just going to wire that up and then rerun this every time that Turbolinks loads a new page. Um, so this is as simple as that is. You can also do things like use the stimulus wrapper for it, but I want to show you how you would implement you know, a normal JavaScript library. You're going to have to do an import like this or a require and basically assign it to a variable so that you can call methods um, on it like this later on. So all of these JavaScript libraries have instructions on that stuff and you can just follow their directions on how to do that. And one of the things we also need to do here is I'm just gonna add a require for flat picker dist flat picker dot CSS. This is gonna import the CSS for it, which seems a little strange because it's in a JavaScript file. Um, but this is how you have to use things in Webpacker. It knows that the .css extension is of course not JavaScript, but actually CSS. And so it will go and output that as a style sheet. And so we want to go into our application layout and just make sure that we have the style sheet pack tag as well. So normally you're gonna have the style sheet link tag and that will load the asset pipeline style sheets, which is great. Rails is still encouraging you to use the asset pipeline for your style sheets, but running your JavaScript through a processor through Webpack um, is now the default. So we're gonna change this a bit and we're gonna still leave the asset pipeline include tag, but we're also going to add one for the Webpacker CSS that is generated. And we just need to make that change. So instead of link tag, make it a pack tag and we are good to go. So if we open up our um, form.html.erb, we can change our date select to say a text field and we need to implement that data behavior as flat picker. And this will make sure that our JavaScript uh, catches that and loads up. And if everything went well, we should be able to see that we get the flat picker, uh, you know, widget or selector here, picker. Whenever we click this field, we can click a date and it will fill that out. Now what's really cool about this is because we did the alt format, this is actually uh, a hidden field that will be submitted, but the input that you're seeing is actually a read-only field. So this is kind of a um, one just for formatting and it triggers the flat picker JavaScript, but the actual value that will be submitted to the server is actually in a hidden field. So it's maintaining that for you. So you can submit this and you'll see that it used the selected date from flat picker, which is great. So that is how you set up a JavaScript library with um, Webpacker. It's pretty straightforward. You're gonna need to include the CSS into your uh, JavaScript, which seems a little strange, of course, but that's just how it works. And that is pretty much all you need to do. It's very similar to the way that you would do things with the asset pipeline, except instead of doing maybe a require in your application.css, or SCSS file, we're gonna do that in your JavaScript file instead. So the next step is for us to set up a CSS library like Tailwind CSS in Webpacker and Rails 6. And now that everything is these JavaScript config files, you can actually go and take the instructions pretty literally from these libraries, which will be awesome. But we're gonna cover that in the next episode, and I will talk to you guys then. Peace.